Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the principles of clean architecture and why they matter in software development. Let us start with an example. This is a code base that has been around for a while. And as you can see, it is kind of a mess. Files and folders everywhere. No clear separation of concerns and it's hard to make sense of it all. This is where the clean architecture comes in. The basic idea behind the clean architecture is to separate the concerns of your application into distinct layers and make sure that each layer has a clear responsibility. At the center of the architecture is the core domain logic, which represents the business rules and logic of your application. This is surrounded by layers that handle different concerns, like the user interface, data access, and external interfaces. By separating these concerns, you can achieve several benefits. First, it makes your code base more modular and easier to reason about. Second, it makes it easier to swap out individual components or services without affecting the rest of your application. But the real magic of clean architectures comes from the fact it highlights the needs of your business logic and not the need of any particular framework or technology. This means that your application can be more sustainable over time as you can evolve and improve the underlying technology stack without having to rewrite your entire application from scratch. So, without any further delay, let us start exploring the clean architecture. Hello and welcome everyone. Before we start, I would highly recommend for you to watch my previous two videos the application architecture styles and foundational architecture principles. So, let us start now. What is the clean architecture? The clean architecture is not just about writing code. It's a mindset that helps developers writing maintainable and scalable software. By using separation of concern and giving priority to code organization, we can create more efficient and sustainable projects. The clean architecture is not something new. It was already introduced in 2012 and is in itself a reinvention of the wheel. The clean architecture is actually a other type of variation of a popular uh, architecture such as hexagonal or onion architecture. There are many differences in the design between the clean, hexagonal and the onion architecture, but I will not go through it in this video. The clean architecture is trying to give us the best in terms of testable, maintainable, and scalable code. One of its key features is the separation of concern, mainly plain layered architecture. The problem of referencing layer will go away using the clean architecture. This will be possible since the clean architecture is also heavily based on dependency inversion. For sure. We will create interfaces or abstraction in the core so that the business logic will be entirely independent of the UI and the code base. There won't be even any references for this project. Most likely the onion architecture, the clean architecture is built around concentric circles. Here you can see a figure that represents a clean architecture which is a set composed of circles. Each circle contains a layer. To explore how the code will be structured with clean architecture, we need to start in the middle and work towards the outside of the circles. We will find the core in the middle, which contain abstractions and uh, entities and interfaces. Around the entities, we will find the application logic and the services which work on the entities and it's also considered part of the core. One very important uh, aspect is that the core is completely agnostic to any other circle that lie around it. That means that the core has completely no knowledge of any implementation details or mechanism, such as knowing how the data is stored. The implementation live in the infrastructure project or projects. But now take a look at the arrows here which represents the dependencies. They point onwards, so towards the abstraction or the interfaces. 
Remember, this is exactly what dependency inversion is all about. In the core, we are working with interfaces for pretty, for pretty much everything. Some interfaces are still satisfied within the core and in the domain services, but most of them will be fulfilled or plugged in from the outside. This is uh, different from a traditional layered architecture, where the business logic points to the infrastructure layer. Finally, we have the UI, the user interface, which is also an outer circle. Nothing in the core knows anything about the data is represented from the user. So this is a clean architecture in a nutshell. To summarize, the clean architecture is a concentric model, where each layer is a different circle. At the center, we have the domain entities and the abstraction, as well as we will have the application logic and business logic. In this circle, we will not find any references to packages such as uh, uh, logging or persistent ignorance. Also, in this circle, I have no idea about the implementation details. This belongs to the next circle, which is the infrastructure layer. The infrastructure layer, it has dependency on the core projects, and it is uh, where the implementation is happening, and also where we can implement other services such as logging or notification or persistent ignorance. The final circle is the UI circle, which is also dependent on the core projects. Well, now in order to, imp to implement uh, this type of architecture, there are two very important principles. One is the dependency inversion, which I have already spoke about it. And uh, at runtime, the dependency will be plugged in from the outer circle. The second principle is the mediator pattern, which we will discuss in detail in my next video where, we'll, where we will implement the clean architecture. The mediator pattern will allow us to create a high level of loose coupling by enabling us to message, uh, by enabling messages between objects and not to create uh, tightly coupled objects. Let me help you by giving you some more information on what code is in clean architecture, go where exactly. So what do we have in the core project? Well, entities. For sure, the domain is part of what uh, we consider the core project. Second, we will have contract and interfaces or abstraction. The contract implementation belongs to the infrastructure. One thing I want to repeat here is that you should not have any code or dependency in the core project that is infrastructure related. In the infrastructure project, we will have the implementation of the contract. As we said, in the core project, we define what are the contracts, but not how they are implemented. This belongs to the infrastructure project. In addition to that, we will have data access code, logging implementation, a client for other API, identity management, and file access. Finally, this one is pretty straightforward. I call it the UI but it can also be an API. Specific code goes in this layer, such as middleware or filters, because they are not part of the core projects. Of course, the UI layer needs to interact with the rest of the code. In a layered architecture, the UI belongs to the business logic layer, but in a clean architecture, the UI communicate with the core projects. But we want this communication to be as loosely coupled as possible. And that's why we are going to use Mediator R and Mediator Pattern. This will create a loosely coupled design and lightweight controller, which I think is a very good design. Now that we have understand the clean architecture, here are some benefits of implementing it. The first benefit is that uh, writing code this way will make it independent of the UI or the framework use. Second benefit is that we can focus on writing our business logic code. The third benefit 
uh, our code will be independent of the database used. And the fourth benefit, because we are implementing persistent ignorance, our code will have high level of maintainability. Fifth benefit, uh, our code will have a good structure and a solid architecture that can cope with changes. And uh, the sixth benefit, since we can run tests uh, so easily because of the separation of concern, we can make changes with confidence. And finally, while implementing the clean architecture, we are going to find that the layers are easily to be tested in isolation or altogether using unit, test unit testing or integration test. Finally, I think that for an enterprise application that has changing over time, the clean architecture is a good choice. One word of warning though, clean architecture means more work, so it's not a perfect fit for every application. It might be an overkill for smaller project, but we all know what happened with smaller project. They become large before we know it. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comment if you have any question or feedback. See you in the next video.